Good morning, everybody. We're live from the birdhouse, and today is Tuesday, November 22nd. We're just a couple days away from uh, Thanksgiving, and I want to thank all of you guys who tuned in on Saturday for our live stream with Stan Tequila. That was a lot of fun. That is still up on our Facebook page and YouTube page if you are interested in checking out what we talked about. We were talking migration, some winter birds, some of which are starting to flow in to the area here and I'll show you those um, and uh, talked a bit about photography too. People had questions about the camera equipment that Stan uses so there was some good conversation about that as well. Today we're talking about some of the birds that are coming through the area and um, so I'll share some photos of those guys and tell you where you can go to see them. Um, one new product that we have, and if you came here over the weekend, you might have tried to sample, is Birds and Beans Coffee. So this is our, uh, we're dipping our toe into the coffee world here to see if there's some interest. Birds and Beans Coffee is different from your traditional coffee because it's all shade grown. So it's grown in a way that's more sustainable for the birds. So instead of clear cutting full areas in order to grow the plants, uh, the coffee plants, they grow this in the shade. So there's still some canopy. So there's still some um, habitat there for the birds. So that's something that makes birds and beans coffee different than your traditional coffee. So we do have some different types. We have um, their dark roast. This is called Scarlet Tanninger, and this is their best seller. So we've got that dark roast both in coffee grounds and in whole bean. And we also have a medium roast and a light roast. So if you're interested in supporting the birds while you drink your cup of coffee in the morning, try this birds and beans coffee. We did have it on tap, if you will, over the weekend at our open house. And we will have it brewing again this Saturday and Sunday for our next open house. And our next open house are going to be uh, small business Saturday. So that's Saturday the 26th and then Sunday the 27th. So we'll have coffee brewing. We'll have some food and some hot cider out for you guys as well as some different specials. And we do have our jigsaw puzzle swap happening on Saturday as well. So that happens from 10 until noon and you can come in, bring your jigsaw puzzles and swap them out for some new to you designs. We have a whole bunch of, uh, of them here that you guys have dropped off. So we've got a huge stash and every month we get more and more as people are dropping off their puzzles. So that's always fun too. As always, if you have questions, you can put those in the comments. Today I'm going to give you guys an update on some of the birds people are seeing around and we will also be back on Saturday with another broadcast where we'll show off some of your photos. So if you've got time uh, over the next few days, if you've got some, some time off, snap some photos and send them in and we'll share them here on our broadcast. So uh, something exciting to mention are the evening gross beaks that are coming into the area. So we talk about some years that there's eruption years where birds that aren't commonly here will make an appearance, if you will. They fly further south than normal. And evening grosbeaks are one of those. And so far, there's been several sightings of evening grosbeaks, um, usually one at a time. But this is what the male looks like here. The female is going to be lighter in color. They've been seen around the lakeshore especially. So one of the best places to go to see them is in Webster Park in the campground area and that's been a pretty good hot spot for some of these birds so if there's only one place you can go to that's where i would go uh, so they've been seen webster park they've been seen at whiting road park which is right across the street from webster park um, braddock bay and most recently over at hamlin beach state park so keep your eyes out for evening gross beaks and i will be doing the same because i have yet to see one another gross beak that's been seen now this is brand new um we'd had as of the last broadcast we'd had some sightings of evening gross beak but now there's been some sightings of this bird which is a pine gross beak and three of them were spotted and those were also seen at Webster Park in that campground area. So if you're not familiar with how to get there, if you're parking at Whiting Road Park, go across the street. Um, so right from, across the street from the parking lot of Whiting Road, there's a little trail. There'll be a pond on either side of you. 
keep going straight and keep veering towards the right. And that'll take you up to the campground area. That's the way I always go. And it's a, it's a nice little hike. And ultimately you'll start to, to go up a little gravel road and there will be some little cabins around. And if you keep going up through that area, there's all kinds of little cabins and that's your campground area. So that's where these birds have been seen. So both the evening grosbeak here and the pine grosbeak have both been seen in that area as well as this bird here, the bohemian waxwing. So you're probably familiar with cedar waxwings, which is this bird here. Um, and what has been seen recently in a mixed flock of cedar waxwings is one bohemian waxwing. So they look pretty similar. Um, they do have a different call. Their call is a little bit slower than the cedar waxwing, but they're also going to be bigger. So they're a larger bird. They're bulkier. They're more gray in color. So if you look at the cedar waxwing, they're kind of, um, they're pretty tan in color and the bohemian waxwing is going to be more gray. It also has very bright white wing patches. So if you look at its wings here, it does have bright white patches and it does have a little rusty patch underneath uh, where its tail is. So that's how you can tell the difference there between the cedar waxwing and the bohemian waxwing. So depending on what angle you get, look for those bright white patches on the wing um, or that little rusty patch underneath its tail feathers. So this was also seen at the Webster Park, uh, the Webster Park, the campground area, and it was seen most recently two days ago at Whiting Road Park, um, uh, which is right across the street. So um, you can park at Whiting Road Park and explore that. There's tons of trails there. Um, I, I tend to see a lot of cedar waxwings at Whiting Road Park because they have so much grapevine growing around there. And the, the waxwings really like those berries. So some interesting birds to keep an eye out for. So this is the evening grosbeak, just as a little recap. There's the pine grosbeak, and then there's a bohemian waxwing. So all birds that we don't necessarily see here all the time. So if you've got some extra time, some, some days off with the Thanksgiving holiday, you might want to take some time off and see if you can find them. If you're by the water, there are some other birds to be out on the lookout for. Um, common loon. So keep an eye out for common loon around the lake. And then also red-throated loon. So this is a red-throated loon in its winter plumage. So you might think, well, that doesn't look like it has a red throat at all. It doesn't. Um, it will, though, come the breeding season. But right now, this is what red-throated loon look like and you can find them around the lake shore as well and cormorants there's still cormorants around we'll probably have them all winter as long as there's some open water and all of these birds you can find floating usually floating on the surface of the water and then diving under some fish so the cormorant here has that hooked bill so if you look closely it does have that little hook on the tip of its bill. If you ever see them out of the water, they're usually standing with their wings kind of spread open. So that's their typical pose, but they are also around. Long-tailed duck. This is another winter resident that we don't have here in the spring and summer, but they come into the area when it is colder out and they are being seen around the lake shore as well, or around um, around Akoi Bay is another good place. Any place with a wide open area of water, keep an eye out for a long-tailed duck. Redhead as well, uh, another type of waterfowl species there. The male has a bright red head and a bluish colored bill that's tipped in black. So redhead, another waterfowl species. white wing scoter, a bird that you won't find here in the summer. They are, um, they have a really large thick bill and then they've got white wing patches here. So keep an eye out for them as well. If you're spending any time by the water, it's probably worth pulling out and seeing what kind of waterfowl you can find this time of the year. And as well as scalps, this is white wing scoter, but these are actually scalps. Um, there's what's called a greater and a lesser scalp. And the greater scalp has a wider head and the lesser scup has a thinner head. So they can be really hard to tell the difference between the two. Colors don't really 
um, don't really mean anything, even though they look different here. Um, their coloration looks different here. They can look very, very similar when you see the two of them together. But if you're trying to identify the difference between a greater scalp and a lesser scalp, look at the size of the head because the greater scalp will have that kind of wider head. And then there's mergansers too. This is another diving duck. So you can see them floating around the water, then they'll dive underneath. I love the red-breasted merganser, the male here with the kind of disheveled looking feathers. There's also what's called a common merganser and the male common merganser has smoother feathers that that go over its head. It does have a greenish colored head like a mallard, but it's going to be a much larger duck with a lot of white on it. And then there's the female common merganser and my favorite, the hooded merganser. These are much smaller and when they're flared out, they have these really neat looking hoods. So that's the male on the left and then the female on the right. So sometimes that hood is kind of pushed down so you don't see it flared out like that, but they're going to be a smaller diving duck that we do have around here right now as well. If you see something that is a bird of prey, but quite small, could very well be a merlin. This is what a merlin looks like. They, they look very, very similar um, to, Oh, here we go. Yeah. So this is this is your Merlin here. So if you see something that has kind of sharp wings and um, is flying around, even water, they've been seen a lot around the water. They look like a little falcon, which they are. So they're kind of like a, the smaller cousin of, say, the peregrine falcon. Um, but they're going to be around here in the in the winter months. So you can keep an eye out for them as well. And then if you go out towards any area that has wide open space, so if you go towards, um, you know, some, some grasslands or farm fields, especially if you're driving around and you see a large flock of birds that's not pigeons, it could very well be snow buntings. Snow buntings will start coming back into the area soon. And this is what they look like. It can be hard to see them close up because usually you see them kind of from a distance all flying around together, but snow buntings will be back in the area soon as well. And we're getting lots of reports of red-breasted nuthatches in people's backyards. So this is a bird that you can find in your backyard. All these other birds we've been talking about are really birds you're going to see when you're out bird watching, not necessarily in your backyard. But this is one you can easily find in your backyard coming to your suet feeder, or your peanut feeder or sunflower heart feeder. This is a red breasted nuthatch, more common in the winter than they are in the spring and summer months. Brown creeper people are still seeing. If you see something small and brown creeping up a tree, even in your backyard, could very well be a brown creeper. They blend in really, really well with the bark on the tree. And then this is a bird you might find in your backyard now in the winter, you know, as we get into the winter months. This is an American tree sparrow. They, uh, they can sometimes be confused with chipping sparrows, which are smaller, and they are here in the spring months. But the, the tree sparrows are here when they have a chestnut cap on the top of their head, and they have what's called a bicolored bill. If you look at its bill, the top is black and the bottom is yellow. So that's a pretty dis uh, distinctive, distinguishing characteristic there on the American tree sparrow. If you go out to Menden Ponds, for example, and you're feeding birds at Birdsong Trail, if you're feeding the birds out of your hand, um, that's a good place to look for tree sparrow. They're usually on the ground cleaning up the little seeds and shells. And then fox sparrow, a, a, a bird we see migrating through the area, pretty large sparrow. They've got kind of like a pot belly. Um, they're going to be kind of a chestnut type of color with a very gray face and they're quite large. So they're strikingly bigger than say your typical house sparrow. White-throated sparrow, uh, be on the lookout for them coming to your feeders. They could be underneath their feeders. They might be feeding right on them. And they uh, will have that white patch underneath their throat as well as white on the top of their heads, which isn't always this bright white. Sometimes it is quite brownish in color, but keep an eye out for that yellow dot in between their eye and their bill. That's a pretty good characteristic there of the white-throated sparrow. And then there's also white-crowned sparrow, which are 
quite a bit larger than the white-throated sparrow. They're overall quite gray in color as well. They don't have that yellow patch in between their eye and bill. They just have the black and white stripes on the top of their head. And then juncos, of course. Juncos are going to be the most common sparrow species we get here in the winter months that we don't have in the spring and summer. They're overall quite gray. They have that white belly and that little pink bill. So look for them underneath your feeders, especially as they clean up little millet or the sunflower seeds that have spilled underneath your feeders. And pine siskins. So pine siskins have started to be reported in the area more so than they have been over the past few weeks. So more and more reports of pine siskins and they come to Niger feeders mostly. So if you're feeding Niger seed or our Finch favorite mix or um, anything with black oil sunflower or especially sunflower hearts in it, keep an eye out for pine siskin. Pine siskin will sometimes flock together with goldfinches but they're quite a bit more striped than the goldfinches. Goldfinches don't really have stripes on them like the pine siskins do. And pine siskins will have this yellow patch on their wing and they also have a really sharp bill, which you can see pretty well in this photo here, that their bill comes to a pretty fine point, whereas the goldfinches have kind of a more dull bill. So keep an eye out for pine siskins because there have been over the past week more and more of them reported. So keep an eye, keep your feeders full and keep an eye out for these pine siskins. Pretty cool. And the best way, if you are looking for ducks and waterfowl and even some birds of prey out there on the lake or on the, uh, you know, on the bay and your binoculars are not quite cutting it, the best thing to do is get what's called a spotting scope. So spotting scopes um, will give you way more magnification than your binoculars do. So um, for example, I have binoculars that are an eight by 42, which means they have an eight power magnification and a 42 millimeter size exit lens. Whereas, uh, so I can get up to eight times magnification, which is great normally for what doing any kind of birding if you're out on a trail. But if you're looking for things that are super far out there, you might wanna think about getting a spotting scope and they will magnify things more like uh, 15 to 45 times. Um, so they can magnify things double, triple, you know, quadruple what your binoculars can do. And as you zoom in and, and bring things closer, it does kind of narrow your field of view so you don't have this wide of a field of view, but you can see things up close. So it's really good for stationary things like ducks that are just kind of floating there on the water. So <clears throat> keep, in, uh, keep that in mind if you are trying to up your birding game and you're looking for a way to identify some of these birds that are way far out. Spotting scopes are quite uh, quite good for that. You can spend thousands and thousands of dollars on spotting scopes. We have one that's really good um, made by Vortex. It's only $950 and that's what I use and I'm really surprised um, by how good the picture on that is and it's cool. You can snap your phone up to it with if you have an adapter and you can take photos with your cell phone right through the the spotting scope. So it's really cool, the technology that's out there now. So it uh, might be something you want to put on your Christmas list um, if you are trying to up your birding game. That is everything I have for you guys today. It was a little update about the different birds that are being seen in the area. I'll keep an eye on those sightings of the evening grosbeaks and the pine grosbeaks and pine siskins and give you guys an update on Saturday as well as share your photos that you guys have been sending in. There's a pretty good diversity of different things you guys have seen. Um, as always, if you have any questions, you can throw those in the comments. Um, Dina is on. She says, good morning, everyone. Just love these cool ducks coming around for the winter. Agreed. So so even though we're not in the height of migration like we are in, say, May, there are still a lot of interesting and different birds coming through the area. So we'll be back on Saturday with another broadcast. Until then, enjoy your week, and I hope you have a happy